Hello, everyone. Once again, I would like to continue our discussion on digital modulation. Today, our topic for discussion is to distinguish ASK, amplitude shift keying, FSK, frequency shift keying, and PSK, phase shift keying. Okay, so this is my email. If you have any question on today's video, please send me an email. So let's understand what is a digital modulation. Okay, so in digital modulation, the carrier signal amplitude frequency or phase is modified according to the baseband signal. So let's take a look on this diagram here. So this is the baseband signal, or sometimes we call this as our message. And this is the carrier. So the carrier actually help to carry our message over, for example, for this case here. So the carrier, either the amplitude change with respect to the baseband, the frequency or the phase change with respect to the baseband. When the amplitude change, we call this amplitude shifting. And when the frequency change, we will call it a frequency shifting. And when the phase change again, we will call this phase shift keying. Okay, we are going to take a close look on this three shift keying on the next few slides. So any modulate signal, okay, they can actually represent by this equation here. So as I share with you on the previous slide, if I change the amplitude, so this is called amplitude shift keying. If I change my frequency, okay, this will be called a frequency shift keying. And if I change my phase, okay, this will be classified as phase shift keying. Okay, so let's understand what is phase shift keying. So for this case here, okay, I'm going to use two level to illustrate on amplitude shift keying. Okay, for that, for example, this is a digital data that will be sent into a digital modulator. Okay, at the output over here, for example, if the message is zero, okay, I will have this waveform. When the message is one, I will have a sine wave appear over here. So in short, this is a message. Okay, so the message is 10110101. So what I'm going to do is if the message is one, I'm going to copy this one message over here. If the message is zero, I'm going to copy this message over here. And the message is one, I'm going to copy this message one over here. And this thing continue. So what happened here is when you look at the waveform, you will be able to distinguish the message. If you see something, it's a one. If you see nothing, it's a zero. This is one, one, zero, one, zero, one. So this is amplitude shift keying with two level. So next, we are going to understand amplitude shift keying with four level. So when the message is zero, zero, again, I can represent nothing when the message is zero, zero. When the message is zero, one, okay, I will represent it by a very small amplitude over here. Okay, when the message is one zero, okay, I will represent it by a bigger amplitude as compared to the message zero one. And last but not least, when the message is one one, I can represent it by having the largest amplitude. So again, for this case here, okay, before I do anything, I need to pack my message two bits into one message. So this is how I arrive the so-called waveform here. So every two bits is equals to one message here. So for example, this is one zero. I'm going to copy this message over here. This is one one. I'm going to copy this message over here. So next will be zero one. I'm going to copy this message. Another one is also zero one. I'm going to copy this message here. So again, when you look at the signal strength in terms of amplitude, okay, you know what is a message that is intent sent up by the transmitter. So you look at the so called the amplitude, okay, you can distinguish the message here. So this is amplitude shift keying with four levels. Next, okay, we are ready to do this frequency shift keying okay, with two level. So again, it's the same thing over here. The digital data consists of one and zero. Okay, and then with carrier at the output of the modulator, for example, for this case here, if it's a message zero, I will give a low frequency. If it's a message one, I will give it a high frequency. 
And again, for this example here, this is my message. And when the message is one, I copy the high frequency over. When the message is zero, I copy the low frequency over. When the message is one, again, I copy the high frequency over. And this is how I come up this waveform for FSK. So if I receive this waveform, I should be able to tell the message. So this is having a high frequency. I know it's one. This is low, it's zero. This is high, one, one, zero, one, zero, one. So this is frequency shifting with two level. Again, let's go through frequency shifting with four level. Okay, so what is the trick is basically I play with the frequency. So when the message is zero, zero, I have extreme low frequency. And when the message is zero, one, my frequency increase slightly. And when the message is one, zero, I further increase my frequency. And when the message is one, one, okay, it has the highest frequency. So again, from here, this is the digital data. Again, I group them into two. And that's how I arrive at this waveform here with this message. So simple for you is if the message is one zero, you just copy this message over. When it's one one, I copy this waveform over. When it's zero one, I copy this waveform over. And again, when the message is zero one, I copy this message over. Again, how you read your data is basically you look at the frequency from here. I know it's one zero. This has the highest frequency, so I know it's one zero, and this is zero one and zero one. So this is on frequency shifting with four level. Next, we are ready to understand what is phase shifting. Okay, so if there is only two level, when the message is zero, okay, I can represent by a falling edge. So this thing actually first they fall. When it's the message one, I have a rising edge. That means at the beginning of the bit the edge actually increase. So again, from this diagram here, okay, you can see that on the message one, they has a rising edge. When it's a message zero, you can see over here, this is a falling edge. So with this, you actually can generate up this waveform. And from the waveform, you actually can distinguish this message also. So next, okay, I'm going to do it in four level. So when it's message zero, zero, I can represent by this waveform here. When the message is zero one, I can represent by this waveform. Okay, which is this is the, with a phase of zero, this is with a phase of ninety, this is a phase of hundred and eighty, and this is a phase of two hundred and seventy. Okay, you probably cannot make sense what I'm going to say. So let me use this diagram on these slides here to describe here. So for example, this is a wave, okay, a sine wave. So when it's a message zero, I will use this as the so-called the edge, the starting edge here. So when the waveform begin over here, which is zero degree, okay, I know the message is zero, zero. When my message is zero, one, okay, I can start the edge over here. So I know my message is zero, one. And when my message is one, zero, okay, I can start the waveform at this point here. And then last but not least, when my message is one, one, I can actually start my message at this point here. So now you understand how I actually got this waveform here. So the, when the message is one zero, okay, it's, it's 180 degree of phase. I actually start from, I copy this waveform into here and that's how I get this message. And when the message is one one, I actually copy this over. So this having a phase shift of 270 degree over here. And then this is a zero one. Okay, so with a phase shift of 90 degree, same as for the other one. So with this, I hope you understand the difference between amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, and phase shift keying. In this video, I show you the two level and four level. So with this, okay, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, so please like and subscribe. Thank you.